Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily videos on artificial intelligence for your personal and business life. In this video, we're going to show you all the fundamental stuff you need to know about using the chat GPT block when it comes to automation flows. So I'm going to go ahead and add this specific video to our playlist here where we dive into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and seeing how AI can be integrated with every single one. Purpose of this video really is to showcase the capabilities and really understand fundamentally what a ChatGPT block is when it comes to automation and all the different parameters associated with it. One other thing I want to point out is check out the hat here. Let me know in the comments if you like it. If you're not familiar with that logo, that is our marketplace here at WebCAF AI where we sell pre-built automation solutions. But without further ado, you'll probably see more of this. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and figure out everything we need to know about the ChatGPT block when it comes to making Zapier flows. And honestly, this could probably be applied to other automation platforms such as Make. I'm going to go ahead and rename this Zap to ChatGPT block. First thing you need to understand about the ChatGPT block is it can't be used as a trigger, which makes sense due to the fact that a lot of times when you use a ChatGPT block, it's either for extracting data from outputs or creating outputs using the prompt. So knowing this, I'm going to go ahead and just put any random trigger here. We're just going to use a webhook here and jump into our ChatGPT block. So I'm going to type in ChatGPT and go ahead and start using it. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that there is a difference between ChatGPT block and OpenAI blocks. So the OpenAI block, you want to use more stuff like uh, DALE and Whisper. So let's say, for example, you wanted to send a prompt within ChatGPT, or sorry, within OpenAI's block. We hit continue here. You'll see that we are limited in our capabilities. Now, one of the major capabilities that we're limited to in an OpenAI block is the ability to create a memory key. And as you'll see here, that is pretty fundamental to a lot of automation flows. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this and let's go ahead and jump into this ChatGPT block here and learn everything we need to understand when it comes to creating an event. So we're going to go ahead and go with conversation, hit continue here. Let's go ahead and connect our account. Out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and jump my face over here. But as you see here, we have a ton of different variable inputs that we have the capabilities to manipulate. So let's go ahead and walk through every single one of these and tell you essentially why they are fundamental to a block. Let's go ahead and skip the most important one, which would be the user message here and just jump into the rest of the variables to start off. Now, the first one in this context past the user message is going to be username and assistant name. This is how the data is formatted on a output. So let's just go ahead and just give an example here. We're going to go ahead and do user uh, example. And then we're going to do an assistant. Um, we'll put a random word like soccer. And let me go ahead and just test an action real quick on this. So I went ahead and just changed the trigger to a scheduler. So we have some data to play around with later in this tutorial. But for now, let's go ahead and just put in a user message of um, tell me a short story. So we can kind of see what this looks like for the username and assistant name. We're going to go ahead and come down here. We're not going to add any other thing to this input here. We're going to test action. So as you see here, we got the name user example, and then we come down here, assistant soccer. These aren't too important when it comes to structuring outputs when using a ChatGPT block. I think this is more for your reference as a developer to understand the association with different uh, outputs. For now though, let's go ahead and actually dive into some of the data that comes out of an output and understand everything. Right off the bat, we have the model that's being used. Um, the content is gonna be that user message. If we scroll down here, there is even more information. If you come down here a little bit more, you're going to have more important information that you're going to care about long term, which is going to be the tokens used. So essentially, this is how many open AI tokens were associated with that prompt and output. And then you have tokens remaining. Now, tokens remaining isn't that fundamental in the context of AI automation, as you will not really find yourself ever exceeding that in a single output due to limits that are, are within the system itself. So don't worry too much about tokens remaining. So now that we understand username and user example, the next one we got here is going to be assistant instructions. Assistant instructions is kind of proctoring and guiding ChatGPT and giving a little context of what the fundamental task they are achieving. So what I mean by that essentially is if you were making a article or you're making social media captions, what you can do here essentially is say you are a social media manager. And give a little bit more context, understand what the underlying AI output is associated with and kind of go from there. The way I want you to look at assistant instructions is let's say the entire output is a banana split Sunday. Assistant instructions is just going to be the cherry on top. It's really not fundamental, but it can't hurt you. What I suggest here, though, is if you're having issues, sometimes mess with this as maybe this can help tailor a better output. 
following this, we have our model here. So the model is probably the one of the more important things to really understand when it comes to a chat GPT block, because every single one of these models have very specific use cases that you're going to use them in. So to start off here, the GPT 3.5 model is going to be used in most contexts where you either want to grab data, you want to basically format data, and you want to do stuff that is less comprehension and more comprehension oriented tasks where you use GPT-4. Furthermore, as you see here, we have a GBT 3.5 Turbo 16K. This essentially means that when we want to deal with large amounts of data, so let's say you wanted to take a 10 page or 20 page Google Doc with a ton of text, maybe it's a transcript, and you wanted to find the main points within it, and you're having issues using 3.5 because there's errors, it's loading too much, too long, or maybe the output isn't as good as you want it to be, this is where you're going to transition to a 16K model. Finally, as you see here, some of these models have 0613, 031. You might be asking yourself, what are those? And what are their association? Those are dates. So essentially, the last time that this model was updated was March 1st. In this context, never use those models because of the fact that when the next update comes out, these will disappear and that could cause issues within your flow. So what I would suggest you to do is always use the standard GPT-4, 3.5 Turbo, or 16K. Next, we got our memory key here, and memory key is pretty fundamental when it comes to AI automation in general. I rarely find myself never giving a memory key. There may be some circumstances where it's not too important, but for the majority of the time, the memory key is one of the more important things that you're going to be able to use on a ChatGPT block. Think of it this way. A memory key essentially gives ChatGPT context of previous outputs. What that means for us is two main things. First, it allows us to set up flows where the output expected from ChatGPT is going to be consistent due to the fact of this memory key and it knows how you want the outputs to look like. So that means for us, essentially, we could set up a flow and never have to come back to it due to bad outputs because we set that memory key up. Second, because of the fact that it has context for previous conversations, we can ensure that content that is outputted can be unique every single time and isn't regurgitated information that's been said in the past. This becomes valuable in content that may be in the context of, you know, social media, content that is, you know, more personalized, stuff that is being read by a human that you wouldn't want repeated three days later, a week later, and so on. Or a memory key is going to be a random string of 32 characters. So this really can be anything. So you can go ahead and put anything here. As long as it's a max of 32 characters, this is how you'll proceed. Now, one little trick here is let's say you're working with ChatGPT, You get an output that you don't like, but you go back to the user message and you're like, ah, but this user message seems like it's prompted fine. And it seems like this should be getting the right type of output. One little trick here is add a one, add a random character to clear the memory key and retry at a different output. Chances are you could get a different output by just clearing the memory key that is more effective than what you originally had. Next, we got max tokens. So in this context, this has to do with output, how many tokens you're willing to expend on a certain run. You're going to really be only looking at, at bigger runs, maybe 500 to 1000. But to be completely transparent here, this isn't going to follow this to a fine T. What do I mean by that? Essentially, let's say you want an output that's 2000 words and you put max tokens 2000 chances are in that chat gpt block it's not going to use all 2000 tokens it will stop at maybe 400 450 and then you get a max of maybe 400 words that came out 500 words that came out 600 words came out this isn't an error on your end this isn't your you, essentially there is no way to truly proctor chat gpt to say don't stop running until you expend xyz tokens what does that mean for you that means that you need to essentially be able to carry on the conversation within each chat gpt block to ensure longer outputs so what that means overall when it comes to max tokens is what I would suggest is if you're dealing with longer outputs, set that to 500, set that to 750. But in reality, it really is more arbitrary and, you know, it's not super strict on following the guidelines there. Now we get to our last two sections here, which is going to be temperature and top P. What this means in majority of context here is you're going to want to leave this just at one and one. Essentially, their way of communicating what this means is that a lower top P or lower temperature is going to provide more consistent outputs and their way of basically gauging what a consistent output is, is what they've seen in their data as deemed a good response. And then obviously higher 
temperature and higher top PU is going to be more quote unquote creative responses that maybe don't follow the guidelines of what it's considered a good response, but could have better responses due to the fact that they're more creative. So in that context, most of the time you want to leave this at one on one. If you want to play around with it, I would suggest go ahead and raise it. Maybe get more creativity in some context. That could be pretty cool. Uh, but for most use cases, you can leave this at one one. It's not too fundamental. All right. So then finally, we get to our user message here. Just some quick rules of thumb. When you do a user message, dictation is everything. You want to use as little amount of words as possible to achieve the task that you want to achieve. And that's for two major reasons. The first is because of the fact that every single one of those characters, every single one of those words you put into that prompt is costing you money. That's going to be token usage. That's going to be open AI usage. You don't want to spend more money if you don't need to. Therefore, in a lot of ways of structuring prompts, use as little of words as possible. Now, one quick rule of thumb of what you can do is let's say you're trying to achieve a very specific output. Don't go with it in under the guise of, okay, I have to use as little words as possible. Proceed first with just getting the output you're looking for. So if that takes you a paragraph, if that takes you, you know, a paragraph and a half to get the exact output you're looking for. Okay, great. Now we understand that whatever was supposed to be achieved got achieved. Then you come back to it and kind of kind of scour through it and start switching up words, maybe deleting a sentence there because it actually wasn't too fundamental and so on. And that's kind of what you need to understand for the user message. If you're interested in more complex tutorials on the user message, you can check out our training here at Web Cafe AI or the other videos found within this playlist as we show you different ways that data can be manipulated using a user message and so on, which is one side pointer here. Basically, everything prerequisite to the chat GPT block can be inputted as data. So for this example, we can input the pretty date uh, for the scheduler message here. This becomes very, very powerful due to the fact that you're not dealing with fixed text when it comes to uh, chat GBT prompts. Okay, that is a overall look at the chat GBT block and its capabilities within AI animation. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at Web Cafe AI. If you wanna learn more about AI and automation when it comes to Zapier and chat GBT, check out the playlist at the end of this video. So we're diving into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and seeing how we can leverage every single one. Make sure to subscribe if you want daily artificial content. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.